I think it's going to be worth thinking about where some of these other identities came from. So I talked about coming up for the proof of sine and cos. That's actually at the beginning of the exercise as well for exercise 7a. Um, question one allows you to come up with those proofs. So if that's something that you want to try, you can have a look at those proofs that you've got there. But you might come across an exam question that gets you to say, well, where does the tan proof actually come from? And this says, starting from the formulae for sine of a plus b and cos of a plus b, prove the formula for tan of a plus b. So um, let's just write down the, the formulae for sine of a plus b. No, actually, let's not. It's going to be a lot of wasted ink. We know if we're going to try and find out what tan of a plus b is, what is tan of a plus b in terms of sine and cos? Sine of a cos. It's sine of a plus b over cos of a plus b. And I perhaps should have mentioned this earlier on, but a and b are just values, okay? They could either be unknowns or they could be actual values that you know about here. So we're going to write out what sine of a plus b is. Who feels confident in being able to tell me what sine of a plus b is? Yes. Sine a cos b. Yep. Uh, plus cos a sine. Good. And who's going to feel confident to be able to do cos of a plus b for me? Cos a cos b minus sine a sine. Good. Now, if you have a look at what we've got here and what they've got here, we need to try and think about how we might create those different things that we've got. So the denominator needs to have a tan A, tan B. How do you think I could create a tan A, tan B from this thing that I've got down here? What could I divide on the denominator that would help me get a tan A, tan B somewhere down here? Good. If I divide the whole of the top, the bottom by cos A, cos B, and if I divide all of the top by cos A, cos B, something is going to happen. So I'm going to divide the top by cos A, cos B, and I'm going to do the same on the bottom. I'm going to divide everything by cos A, cos B. Remember, as long as I'm doing the same to the top and the bottom, it's, doing, it's all going to work out. The reason that I chose to do this, or in, in fact that Sam chose to do this, is because I said, well, have a look at the formula that you've got here. They want it to be a tan A plus tan B. We've got a sine A, sine B. So to try and create that tan A, tan B, I know that if I do sine A, sine B divided by cos A, cos B, I'm going to come up with a tan A, tan B. And then hopefully, the rest is just going to magically happen. And you can kind of see how it is going to magically happen because I've got a cos A, cos B here. And when I divide it by cos A, cos B, I'm going to get one. And you're going to see how all these things happen. So I'm going to write this out kind of slowly. So I've got sine A, cos B. And I'm going to divide it by cos A, cos B. That's just this first chunk that I've done here. I'm then going to do the same for the next bit, which is cos A, sine B and I'm going to divide that by cos A, cos B. I'm keeping on looking back at the thing I'm dividing by. And that is all over cos A, cos B, divided by cos A, cos B. It's incredibly easy to write the wrong thing, so concentrate really carefully. And then we've got sine A, sine B, over cos A, cos B. So it's the same as the previous line, but everything has been divided by cos A, cos B. And then I'm going to take a red pen and I'm going to start seeing which things cancel out from each of these individual pieces that we've got here. Because if we can do that, it will hopefully simplify a bit better. I like doing it in a different color just to make it clear that I've been doing some canceling. So I'm just going to concentrate on this first bit here. What can I cancel? I can cancel the cos B here and here. What can I cancel in this one? The cos A. What can I cancel here? The whole thing. I can cancel those, but remember when you cancel the whole thing with a fraction, you have to replace it with a 1, because it's obviously just dividing them. And here I can't cancel anything, but I can replace it in just a second. So this is sine A over cos A, which we know is tan A. This is sine B over cos B, which we know is tan B. Fantastic, we've got the numerator. The denominator is 1. And we've got a sine A over cos A and a sine B over cos B, which is just going to be a tan A, tan B. And that's what they wanted us to prove. 
So the trick was noticing that you had to divide by cos A and cos B. Probably when I was your age, I think I, this is going to sound really lame, but I remember how I solved question, this proof. And I did it, I divided by cos A first to try and come up with one of the tan A's, and then I divided by cos B. But there's no reason you can't divide by cos A and cos B together. And the reason we knew that is because of this thing in the bottom left. Really, it's the whole denominator. The denominator was a big clue. If I divide this by cos A, cos B, I'll get the 1. If I divide this by cos A, cos B, I'll get the tan A, tan B. Well, if I'm doing it to the denominator, I better make sure I'm doing it to the numerator as well. OK? I'll just give you a chance to finish writing that one down. And then these next couple of examples will actually help you with some of the questions we were just having a look at as well. So it's kind of good to just see a little bit more practice on this. And then we'll spend, well, we'll see how long this is going to take. Might get a little bit more in. OK. So given that 2 sine of x plus y is equal to 3 cos of x minus y, express tan x in terms of tan y. Just sounds really abstract, doesn't it? It's like, what's it even talking about? Well. These arguments that we have here are just single arguments. There's just an x and a y. Whereas on this one that we've been given, the arguments are an addition or a subtraction, hence these formulae being called the addition formulae. So I'm going to just keep working on these, because I don't want them like this. I don't want them in their brackets. I want to expand them out. And when I say expand them out, not literally expand them out, expanding them out using the addition formulae. And then I'm going to see if I can create tan x and tan y afterwards. So we have 2 sine of x plus y equals 3 cos of x minus y. Sam, do you think you could do the expansion for the sine of x plus y for me, please? <coughs> yep. Good. Do you notice how I did brackets at the beginning? Because 2 is not just applying to this first term. The 2 is applying to both of them. So you need to make sure that you bracket it, or you start it with a 2, both of them. I don't remember to start the second one with a 2, so I put brackets in. And then the right-hand side, I'm going to do 3, and I'm going to open up the brackets. Chaz, do you think you could do the expansion of cos of x minus y for me? Um, plus, plus, good. Good. Very good. So we dealt with one of the issues. The issue was that the arguments were not in x and y. But look at them. Now the arguments of all of these trig functions are now just x or y. The next thing we need to deal with is that they want them to be tan. So how do I create tan x or tan y? Mm, we, we will expand it in a second, yeah? What is tan x equal to, though? OK, so to create a tan x, divide by cos x. To create a tan y, we will divide by cos y. OK? I'll expand the brackets, and then we're going to do that. So we're going to do 2 sine x cos y plus 2 cos x sine y equals 3 cos x cos y plus 3 sine x sine y. To create tans, divide by cos. It's just going to be a trick. If you ever want to create a tan, divide by cos. So it's really similar to what we did on that previous thing. I could do dividing by cos x, and then I could do dividing by cos y. Or my alternative is to divide by them both at the same time, divide by cos x, cos y. So I'm going to divide this by cos x, cos y. I'm going to divide this by cos x, cos y, cos x, cos y, and cos x, cos y. Because that, if I, div if I do those divisions by cos x and cos y, all the tans that can be created will be created. And you just have to be really careful by, I mean, literally careful with your eyes. You need to visually check now that you're not cancelling out the wrong things. So does anything cancel in this first one? The cos y's cancel. And I can now replace this as 
what is this whole thing going to be? 2 tan x. OK. The next thing I've got here, what cancels? Cos the cos x. And I have sine y. So it will be 2 tan y. What happens in this one? They all cancel, so I just get 3. And here? Nothing cancels, does it? Good. So you get 3 tan x tan y. Board's going crazy. So you get 3 tan x tan y. So we dealt with two things. The two things that were the problem is we didn't have tan, and we had x plus y and x minus y. Now we're at a stage where we can just answer the question. We've got the tan. We've got the arguments correct. So we want to express tan x in terms of tan y. That means we need to make tan x the subject. So I'm going to just do a little bit of rearranging. I'm going to take this and put it to the other side. So I will have 2 tan x minus 3 tan x tan y. So I've subtracted that. And I'm also going to subtract this plus 2 tan y which is minus 2 tan y. You're writing more letters now than numbers in maths, yeah? And so what do we do to finish this off? Factorize, and then we're nearly done. So I'll take a factor of tan x out. So that's 2 minus 3 tan y equals 3 minus 2 tan y. So tan x is equal to 3 minus 2 tan y over 2 minus 3 tan y. Um, Sam, what do you think would have happened if instead of collecting my tan x's on the left-hand side, if I collected them on the right-hand side, what do you think would have been different about my answer? Everything would be negated. But if the top, if the numerator and denominator are both negated, the it's the same thing. So if you pushed them all onto this side instead, you would have ended up with the answer that tan x was equal to 2 tan y minus 3 over 3 tan y minus 2. Do you see how these two things I've got here in blue and this one in red, they are the same but negated? But because the numerator and denominator have both been negated, they are identical to each other. The reason I'm saying that to you is because they might have said, show that tan x is equal to this. You might have come up with this and been like, oh, I'm wrong. But you're not wrong. It's the same thing. OK, so just the reason that happened is because I put the tan x's onto the left hand side. If you put the tan x's onto the right hand side, you would have ended up. You could, uh, what you would do to transform it is you would multiply this by minus 1 and you would multiply this by minus 1. You would negate the top and bottom and you come up with that, OK? Just in case you want to see that. So there's a couple of questions coming up in the exercise that will be about creations of tans. And this is the trick. You'd create tans by dividing by cos. Are you OK? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I go on to the next page or should I just give you 30 seconds more? And like, why do we want to do this? Because we can. Not because this is super useful by itself. It's just like learning more skills. It's like adding more algebraic manipulation skills now with trigonometry, because we don't know when these things might pop up. We just don't know when they might pop up. So we want to just keep building on our skills, not because they're useful by themselves, but because they're useful as tools for other things, OK? This one is a lot easier, and this is going to remind you of some of the earlier questions that we were just doing, like question um, 5 and 6 and 7. So this one wants you to calculate the exact value of tan x if tan x plus 60 is equal to 5. And it wants the exact value. So what people might have done is they might have said things like, oh, OK, well, I could just do x plus 60 and do the inverse tan of 5. So x is the inverse tan of 5 minus 60. But that's not going to be an exact value at any of that point that we've got there. So that's not an exact value. So what do you think we should do instead, given that we're looking at the addition formula here? Yeah. So what do you think we should do? 
we're going to do the left-hand side. We're going to do the tan formula. Now, I'm wondering if anyone can remember that. Go on then, Chaz. Uh, tan, a tan A. Yeah, no, it's fine. Tan A plus tan B. Excellent. And that is equal to 5. So can you see how I've just rewritten the left-hand side using the addition formula? It's a bit like what you were just doing um, in question six and seven from that first exercise. And they want us to find the exact value of tan x. So I'm going to, first of all, I don't like this giant fraction we've got here. So I'm going to multiply the denominator up to the right-hand side so that I get tan x plus tan 60 equals 5. I'm going to expand the brackets immediately, OK? So it's just going to be 5 minus 5 tan x tan 60. Hopefully, you can just see I multiplied both of these by 5 when I multiplied up. You were asked to memorize this. What is tan 60? Thank you. So it's always going to be the same people who have memorized these things. Tan 60 is root 3. OK? <laughs> and tan 30 is? Tan 30 is 1 over root 3 because it's smaller. OK? Um, so we know that tan 60 is root 3. If you didn't know that off by heart, you could have put it in your calculator. So I now have that tan x plus root 3 equals 5 minus, well, I've got 5 times tan x, which is 5 root 3. Sorry, 5 times tan 60 is 5 root 3. So I have 5 root 3 tan x, like this. And then this looks really similar to the previous page, but instead of it being with tan x and tan y, I've just got a tan x and some numbers. So I'm going to put the tan x onto this side. Sorry, the 5 root 3 tan x onto this side. Tan x plus 5 root 3 tan x equals 5 minus root 3. And then we do the same trick as before. We'll factorize and rearrange. So I'll factorize tan x out. That's 1 plus 5 root 3. And so tan x is 5 minus root 3 over 1 plus 5 root 3. And that's the exact value. When we talk about exact values, we mean thirds multiples of pi, fractions, integers. We don't mean this. That's not an exact value. You would require a calculator to do that. This is perfect. We can just leave it like that, OK? So we're going to do a few more questions. If you want to finish the ones you were previously doing from exercise 7a, then you can do. But we're going to do these ones on the whiteboards until the end of the lesson. It's going to be questions 11 to 15. And then we'll set some, some of those for homework if you don't quite finish them as well, OK?